Hi, this is Seth David for SchoolofBookkeeping.com, bringing to you a very special presentation on the benefits of QuickBooks Online, where I present at the Santa Barbara Bookkeepers Association. Let's look at QuickBooks Online, and let's talk about why QuickBooks Online. Number one, it's the most popular. Intuit is a Fortune 500 company that does a billion dollars a year in sales and has a ton of cash on their balance sheet. Which brings me to my next two points, really. One, it's a mature product. Anybody know when QuickBooks Online was originally released? 2001. It was originally released in 2001. They celebrated their 10-year anniversary of the product in 2011. It was way ahead of its time. And in fact, on some levels, I think it worked against them because people looked at it. They didn't get it. They didn't understand the cloud the way we talk about the cloud now. There was no cloud yet. The cloud meant the puffy things in the sky. And I think people looked at it, and they didn't get it. They didn't understand the benefits of working in the cloud yet, because it was so far ahead. And they just said, forget this. And it doesn't do what the desktop version does, so why would I want that? I got to hear Brad Smith, the CEO of Intuit, give a keynote last November, where he talked specifically and was very open and honest about the fact that the original version of QuickBooks Online was built on old footing. And they had to really rethink the whole product and build it to work like a cloud app of today. And as of that time, last November, they opened up the API for QuickBooks Online. So you're going to see a lot more add-ons being developed for QuickBooks Online because they've now given as much access to the developer that the engineers themselves have to the product, to every area within the product. So you're going to see a lot of new stuff coming out. Lots of resources. I mentioned Intuit is a billion-dollar-a-year company with a ton of cash. They have what they need to invest what they need in order to make sure that this product succeeds. And when you're looking at a product, that you, especially when you're trying to consider what to offer to your clients, and if they're coming to you asking you what to use, you want to look at who's behind that product. Some of these smaller companies, who knows if they'll be here still in five years. You don't want to get married deeply into a product that's not going to be around. You want to get married into a product that's going to be around for a long time and that's going to have the support and the resources to make sure that that product can grow and keep up. So let's take a quick look at what QuickBooks Online looks at looks like. This is the new interface. And they again they try to clean up, and this is the layout is more consistent with what you see in a typical cloud application. They've tried to minimize and hide away all the extra stuff so that when you want to access a certain area, there's going to be something you need to click on. Of course, you have this little sidebar here, right? And this is pretty straightforward and obvious. Then you have this plus sign. This plus sign is where you go pretty much to add any transactions. That's where you're going to go. And then over to the right, the way I like to explain it to people is if you don't find it here and you don't find it in the plus sign, go into the company settings. That's where you're likely to find it. So one of the struggles people have had, even with the new interface, is understanding where to go to, to do stuff, right? Because it's all kind of hidden. But again, what that, the advantage of that is, while I'm working in a particular screen, there's not all this clutter. I can be focused on what I'm doing. That's what they've tried to accomplish with the recent revamp of the desktop interface, and that's what they're trying to do here. So if we click over, you know, again, this is all pretty straightforward. I can go to my customer list, and I can access the customers. But look what they do here. They give me a nice color-coded interface where I can easily click and filter those customers based on who hasn't paid me, right? who's really overdue, and who's past due just, you know, or, or paid within the last 30 days. So this is nice. You know, just at a quick click and glance, you can access useful information very quickly. Of course, you can do the same thing with vendors in terms of what you owe. Right? We've got, in, in the desktop version, I have to go into the menu and go into reports and run a report on open purchase orders. Here I can access it right away, right at the top of my vendor list. The search feature is critically useful. Because it is based on the web, the search function is much more powerful than you'll ever find on any desktop application. And so I find myself using the search a lot. Rather than scrolling down the list, I just punch in the name of the client or the vendor I'm looking for, and boom, they come right up, and I can get into their information. So that's really powerful. Here you have transactions. So we can go into banking. OK, and now here's our bank feeds. Right, so this is 
standard at this point in time. If you've worked with any cloud accounting apps, this is kind of the core of all of them, is that you're gonna add your bank feeds in, you're gonna set them up with the routing and account numbers, and most of them will pull in the data overnight. You don't have to do it. You know, like with the desktop app, I actually have to click and enter a PIN number and then it downloads. Here it's done for you. And then each day, or however often you choose, you go in and you're able to match up your transactions. I can get into the details to change the category, change the payee, and it's all there. This is new transactions, this is what's in QuickBooks. This is what we can exclude. Because if you've ever used this, what you've probably found by now is that, for example, if I've already reconciled a transaction by some chance because I entered it first and then downloaded it later, and I reconciled it before I went into the downloads, it won't match it up for you. It will not match a downloaded transaction with a reconciled one. So it gives me the option to exclude it. That way I can just say, I've already got this. Uh, you know, I don't need to add it into the register. So that's kind of a nice little feature that they give you. Um, again, moving down, most of this is straightforward. Here's your reports area. And what they'll do is they'll give you the recommended reports. And this will change based on your habits, which is nice. You know, it's, it's able to sort of track what you do, what you like, and it'll give you the recommended. Of course, in a demo company, it's going to give you the standards. Here's frequently run, right? Again, demo company, they don't have anything. And then here's where you can save your own custom reports. This is like the memorized reports area in the desktop edition of QuickBooks. And of course here you can just look at all the reports and look at them by category. If I want to add a transaction, initially it gives me this limited list of some of the most frequent things I probably do. And if I want to see everything, I click show more and boom. So you see how this expands out? And what's nice is a lot of times on the web when you're accessing an app and you hover your mouse over something and the drop down appears and if your hand's shaky, you drank too much coffee, you move the mouse off the drop down and it goes away and it's very annoying, right? So here that doesn't happen, it holds. It stays there, which is nice. The only way to get rid of it is to click away. This, the little clock, gives you recent transactions so you can see what you've done recently. So you know how, how many times have you been sitting there entering transactions and all of a sudden you say, oh wait, I think I entered the wrong number on that one and I already saved and closed it. How do I quickly get back to that? Boom, this is your recent transactions. And over here, of course, is you have your search, a simple search and an advanced search where you can be very specific and add more filters to you know, add all kinds of criteria so you can search transactions. Very, very powerful search technology here in QuickBooks Online. And finally over here, you have, like I said, everything else. If it's not here, if it's not up here, it's in here. And here's where you're gonna get to your company settings, your, all your lists, like your chart of accounts, your, uh, your tools, and of course your company information. And here's where you can go manage users. So remember I said how you can add in, I, each version comes with a different number of users included, sort of company users internally. And then, like I said, you can add in two accounting users, one for your bookkeeper, one for your CPA or whoever does the tax returns without any additional cost. And every transaction type that you could possibly enter, and let's take a quick look at one. Let's go enter a check. Every transaction type, you know, you have your customer dropdown. So you do have simple job costing capability here. I can associate an expense with a customer. Um, but that's about as far as it goes. I can't do estimates and then bill off estimates and do the progress billings like I mentioned earlier. Over here you'll select your account. And every one of these will have this option here where you can attach, you can drag and drop files to attach. So if you want to attach the bill that you're paying to the check, just drag it over here and boom, it's in. So the document attachment feature, and this is prevalent in all the cloud accounting apps, is pretty powerful. Right now it almost doesn't make sense not to put it in there. So whether you want the convenience of simply attaching documents to your transactions in the cloud and having them actually live there with the transaction, or the convenience of being able to access your accounting data anywhere, anytime online, and easily be able to share that data with people without having to transfer files back and forth, then QuickBooks Online is definitely something you should check out, especially if it's been a while since you've looked at it, and the last time you looked at it, you found yourself wanting more before you'd be ready to adopt. Take a look now. Take a look at the current version of QuickBooks Online. I think you'll be very, very pleased.